Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. I don't know about you guys, but we feel like 2023 has been an insane year for co-op gaming. From the big hitters like Baldur's Gate 3 and Diablo 4, and even more AAA releases still to come like Super Mario Wonder and Lords of the Fallen. Which brings me to one of my points here. Keeping up with all these games is getting pretty expensive lately. Lucky for you though, I have the life hack you need to continue playing great co-op titles on a budget. And it's rather simple, play more indie games. In a year like this, it's easy to overlook indie titles, which is a shame because you're definitely missing out. So that's what I'm really here to talk about. I have a couple indie games from last year to shout out and a bunch of games from this year that deserve the spotlight. And the best part is the majority of them are under 20 bucks. But that's enough intro, here's 15 indie co-op games you've probably missed. First up is Fueled Up, an Overcooked-like game, so in other words, part of the chaotic co-op subgenre. Unlike Overcooked though, here you make up part of a crew traveling through space. The catch is you're being chased by a giant space octopus and have to keep your ship in shape in order to outrun it. One thing Fueled Up does really well is that it really challenges each player to find their role. In most games like these, I feel like it's relatively easy for one person to take over the whole operation, but that's pretty hard to do here. You have to repair your ship, keep batteries running, refine fuel for your engine, all while dealing with fun obstacles like pressure plate doors or this big poison pit. It's still pretty chaotic, but it's a lot of fun. Fueled Up features 4 player co-op both online and local, and it's out on PlayStation and Xbox consoles plus PC. Despite coming out pretty late in the year, Ship of Fools managed to crack the top 5 of our best co-op games of 2022 list. So if you somehow missed it, consider this your reminder to pull this 2D roguelike out of the old backlog. Ship of Fools is a roguelike where you and your partner are cruising on a ship, and keeping the ship alive while you defeat enemies and bosses is your main goal. In classic roguelike fashion, the upgrades and build variety are obviously the best part. As you play the game, you unlock different characters, which are better suited for different things like repairs or melee versus ranged weapons, that sort of thing. There's a lot of opportunities for coming up with some cool synergies between your two characters, and we had a lot of fun coming up with some truly busted builds. Ship of Fools features two-player co-op, both online and local, and it's out on all platforms. This next game is currently in early access, and Christian and I played it right when it launched. So the footage you're seeing here is a bit rough around the edges, but I see a lot of potential in Frozen Flame. It's a co-op survival game set in a fantasy world. It features all the staples you've come to expect like crafting, base building, exploration, but there's a couple cool surprises here too. One really cool mechanic is you later get the ability to transform into a bird and traverse the skies which helps with exploration. Since launch, they've refined the game a ton and added a new biome and even a survival mode. I think Frozen Flame is shaping up to be a really cool game, especially since you can play it on an online server with up to 50 players. If you want to get in on the ground floor, check it out on Steam. I'm really happy I have the chance to talk about Front Space cause it rocks and more people should be playing it. It's a 4 player online co-op twin stick shooter with some snappy combat and great visuals. The general tone of the game is like an 80s alien movie which as a fan of old horror movies was a big hit for me. One of my favorite mechanics is running into a nest or a drop pod that triggers a wave of enemies you have to defeat. These are super fun as you can lay down traps like turrets or barbed wire, giving you lots of ways to work together in order to survive. Completing these events lowers the alien influence on a level and ultimately weakens the final boss which I thought was a really clever mechanic. There's also different classes, a bunch of different weapons, and you can level up to gain more perk slots to further make your character unique to you. So yeah, all in all, Front Space is a solid title you can check out on Switch and PC. Miss Force is the textbook definition of committing to the bit. This game is all about putting you inside an old Saturday morning cartoon with its own catchy intro song to boot. And yeah, it totally nails it. This is a first person roguelike with some light RPG elements where you play as one of four heroes. Each hero comes with their own character kit that you can further enhance with upgrades throughout your run. And almost every character has an ability that's built around co-op like how the mage character I played could conjure up a defensive shield pretty cool. It recently edited at early access, so there's a ton of content to dive into. Miss Force features 4 player online co-op and is available on all platforms. War Tales is one of the most underrated co-op games to release this year full stop. There's a lot going on with this game, but basically it boils down to being a mercenary management sim with deep RPG mechanics and turn-based combat. 
In co-op, we would split our group in half and we'd each be responsible for a handful of characters in and out of combat. There's a big emphasis on story and decisions here. The game starts a little slow, but quickly gets interesting when you're thrown into the starting conflict and you have to make decisions on who to side with in the first act. The writing is pretty good and made us actually think about the consequences of our actions. You can play War Tales in 4 player online co-op, it's out on PC and Switch, and if any of this piques your interest then be sure to watch our impressions video to hear more. You might notice there's a handful of roguelikes on this list because honestly they just work great in co-op, but all the ones I'm talking about here are pretty different from each other and I can guarantee you haven't played a game like Shoulders of Giants. This game has you simultaneously controlling a sword wielding mech and a gunslinging space frog. Which yeah, is pretty wacky, but works a lot better than you think it would. The real star of the show though are all the crazy abilities you can find. From spawning a giant shoe, to ramming into enemies with garbage trucks, Shoulders of Giants does not take itself very seriously, but is seriously really fun to play. In 4 player co-op, there's small opportunities for build synergies, but honestly, the selling point for me is that it's just a ridiculous no frills roguelike to just mess around with friends. If that sounds cool to you, check it out in the Epic Store. This next game might be the cutest game on this list, despite having a penguin game we'll talk about real soon, but a cat and fish duo, yeah, that's gonna be hard to beat. River Tales Stronger Together is a co-op platform where you can play in two-player local co-op. It has a really nice art style, a quirky story, and it's very approachable for most players whether you're a gamer or not. I played this with my girlfriend who doesn't play many games and we had a pretty good time with it. The game is simple but finds some really clever ways to make you work together. One of my favorite puzzles has you working together to traverse a piranha infested river. You need to time your movements because the piranhas are conveniently afraid of the cat. But the fish has a big job to do in that they have to flip these lily pads up in time for the cat to land on. It was super tricky but really satisfying to solve together and the game is full of its samples like this. If you're looking for a fun approachable platformer, check out River Tales is currently available on Steam. Patch Quest is yet another underrated indie title of this year that deserves the spotlight. And even though we've talked plenty about it and gave it a dedicated review, I'm bringing it up once again because it's simply that good. It's tough to nail this to any one genre as it's a mix of monster taming, bullet hell, mentorvania with some roguelike aspects and even some light base building, so yeah, there's something here for everybody. It really shines in co-op since you can each have your own monster to level up and a lot of these work really well together. The game is also pretty tough, so it's nice to have a friend to revive you when things go south. There's so much more I could say about it, so go watch our review on it. The game features two player local co-op and it's only available on Steam for now. Okay, so it's finally time for that cute penguin game I alluded to earlier. In Bread and Fred, you play as two penguins climbing a mountain. The catch is, is that you're tied together, for safety of course, and you have to communicate to time your jumps. It can be pretty punishing as there's no checkpoints unless you enable them and you'll run into trickier obstacles the farther you make it. So inherently, this is just a great co-op game in that you're 100% reliant on your partner. It's meant to be punishing as it's part of that whole rage game genre like that game getting over it. The funny thing about Brown and Fred though is that it's actually really chill and rarely made as quote unquote rage. The music is a big part of it, but more often than not, we would just laugh when we made a fatal mistake. So make sure you find someone who will laugh with you too and not yell at you or something. Fred and Fred is currently out on Steam, but is coming to Switch soon. Raven's Watch feels like a dream come true in that it's pretty much Hades with online co-op. The only caveat here is that it's an early access and thus a little light on content. We checked out this action roguelike at launch and really enjoyed what we played. Each character plays very differently, playing as the Pied Piper feels like playing a twin stick shooter, whereas Little Red Riding Hood feels more like playing as Sagrius from, well, Hades. As you can tell from the names, the game puts a gritty twist on classic fairy tales and this extends to the NPCs you'll meet like the three little pigs. Each level has you racing against time as you only have 4 cycles before you're forced to phase that level's nightmare boss. Since launch they've added a new character and the second of 4 chapters so at least there's half the game on offer right now. Raven's Watch features 4 player online co-op and is exclusively available on Steam. This next game came out of nowhere this year and is definitely one you don't want to skip over. Cassette Beast is pretty much the co-op Pokemon game we've always wanted and even goes beyond that simple comparison. 
It has some cool companions and mechanics similar to Persona that contribute to combat. Like Pokemon, there's also a whole type slash weakness system that feels unique to Caseppis and even goes a little deeper than Pokemon. I have to talk about the vibes though. This game has a great soundtrack and we both loved its lo-fi art style as well. For an indie title, it has great production value and from what we played of it so far, the story seems to be going in some really interesting places. If you're looking for a relaxing indie co-op game and you're a fan of Pokemon, this is definitely for you. Cassette Beast features two-player local co-op and it's available on Xbox, Game Pass, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Ember Knights is another game I refuse to shut up about and I will continue to sing its praises until I can't anymore. Dramatic intro aside, Ember Knights is dope. It's a hack and slash roguelite you can play in 4 player co-op in both online and local modes. You can choose between 6 different weapons, each of which feels so good to play. The game really shines in co-op with all the synergies you can create within your group. A lot of the upgrades are built with co-op in mind and I love how you have to take turns picking them, thus giving you the opportunity to weigh in on everyone's decisions. Ember Knights exited early access in the summer and launched on Switch on top of the 1.0 version on PC and they're still updating the game with the recent 1.1 update, so yeah, now's the perfect time to jump in. Second to last game here, and this is a fun twin stick shooter slash builder hybrid with some roguelite mechanics. In Super Raft Boat Together, you have to survive waves of enemies while keeping your humble raft afloat. You have to continue to build new planks so you don't drown, all while managing the onslaught of enemies. Between rounds, each player gets to choose a new upgrade, or you might even encounter some NPCs that you can buy from. It's a really fun, if a bit chaotic mix since you're trying to balance repairing the ship with defeating enemies. There's different characters too with different weapons and abilities like how the shark can swim in water. Played this with my girlfriend some and even though we got wrecked a lot, we had a lot of fun. Super Raffo Together features 4 player local and online co-op and is available exclusively on PC. Last game on the list and we're ending with a brand new banger that's coming in just a couple days depending on when this video is published. Launching on the 28th, Pizza Possum is a simple two-player local co-op arcade title that really boils down to this. You got a hungry possum who's gotta eat. The gameplay has you scurrying around guards to steal enough food in order to move on to the next stage of the level. Again, it's super simple, but it's incredibly fun. One of my favorite parts is how the music reacts to your actions, slowly ramping up as chaos ensues. In co-op, you can work together to have one person distract the guards while the other sneaks around. It's not the most complex co-op we've played, but hey, sometimes less is more. Pizza Possum is coming to all platforms, and you bet we'll have a video on it very soon. And that wraps up our list. Really happy I got the chance to talk about some of these games we've played but maybe haven't had the chance to cover on the channel. We have done either an impression or review on a few of these however, so I'll link those in the description if you're interested in hearing more. Hopefully you come away with a couple games you didn't have on your radar before, and if there's a game I've missed, sound off in the comments below. If you're new around here, we cover all things co-op gaming, and if that sounds cool to you, throw us a like or subscribe to see more. Thanks for watching, we'll catch you next time on another episode of The Co-op Bros.